right, Part E. This is a, a really brief overview of virtualization technologies at a very high level. Uh, but as I stressed earlier, virtualization technologies are core to clouds, and in fact, we're changing our virtualization technologies as they're advancing from OpenStack as our dominant uh, technology to Docker as dominant and OpenStack as as sort of in reserve and in some courses not even taught. Okay, here is an overview. And it also happens to have a bunch of links here, which you can uh, look at. Here they are. And um, you notice this Wikipedia is pretty strong here. And um, we will go to hypervisors and the different approaches to virtualizations. And we'll mention the, probably the following technologies, KVM, Zen, Docker, and OpenStack. Um, where KVM is a hypervisor, and Docker and OpenStack are the um, managers above it. Well, D Docker is, can be above KVM and Zen, but it can also be standalone as a container technology. All right, here's... Um, our introduction to virtualization technology, we've sort of explained why we need it. Um, we have to run lots of jobs on the same cluster and on the same uh, node of the cluster, because we want to share the, uh, at the core level. And uh, you really can't use the traditional approach of sticking software and slash loser, slash bin, slash lib, slash says dot, dot, dot. There's too much software needed to, to get everything to work. The software changes. Uh, the different configurations, you know, you have to have an OS configuration. You've got to keep those separate from each other for each job, and that's pretty hard to do. And also, when you intermingle anything, multiple jobs that have security issues. So this requires some sort of virtual machine. It doesn't say how it has to be done, but it needs a virtual machine, which pr pr preserves the illusion of a, say, a Linux or Win usually Linux, but sometimes Windows machine. And that whole machine runs on top of your hardware, and each job has its own machine. Now, um, so which is then treated independently. And I stress why that's particularly important with Multicore. If we look at the machines we have, Tango has 68 cores, uh, 68 chips per, 68 cores per chip. Victor, which you'll use later, it has 48 on um, 224 core Xeon Platinum chips. Um, and you use hypervisors or virtual machine, which are virtual machine monitors, which is some sort of computer software or even hardware that creates and runs these virtual machines and translates the actual call of the captured program in the virtual machine into the real call running on the hardware. Uh, so the machine in which it runs on is called the host, that's a reasonable name. And each of the virtual machine is called a guest. And depending on the technology, the guests have the same operating system or a different operating system from the host. And hypervisor just meant to say that, well, it's a really important thing going on. It's buried in the past. This was term was invented a long time ago. And it's a variant of supervisor, because originally all this technology of running computers was called a supervisor technology. All right, so now we have another more detailed technologies for virtualization, which uh, there's this well-known division into type one and type two. Um, type two, um, a, a sort of a, where you have an actual OS running on the real hardware. So this is a real job, OS on hardware, no virtualization. That supports the hypervisor, which then supports the guests. Here we have three guests. In type one, the hypervisor runs on the hardware, and the guests run on the hypervisor. Um, and in some cases, you can modify the guest OS to make a system calls to the hypervisor rather than executing machine I.O. instructions, which the hypervisor simulates. That's called paravirtualization. 
All right, and so since 2005, hardware virtualization has been around on, as an alternative to power virtualization. And that's, we say we started, um, all this virtualization started long before 2005, because IBM found it pretty useful for their early mainframes, and they actually pioneered this. Here's a nifty uh, remark from 2017, in November, which says that um, effectively Amazon is shifting some or all of their technology from Zen up here, type one, to KVM down here, type two. Gang, that was not, it was sort of slightly secret announcement. Um, now there's this other thing, other approach called operating system level virtualization, which uses the fact that Linux actually has the technology to virtualize built into it. It's called containers. Um, and you can isolate user space instances in Linux. It is not quite as um, secure as the uh, hardware style virtualization, but it has huge advantages in terms of performance and ease of use. And this is what Docker implements. And there are other technologies by Docker. Docker just sort of made this popular by making it particularly easy to use. So and when you're running in a container, you see the contents of the container and the devices assigned to the container. And there's almost no overhead because you're running on the real hardware with the real OS. It's just the real OS has the necessary technology to support multiple containers. Um, now you have to still have a single OS in this case. Whereas in the guest cases, the guest has the OS, and that OS can be different for each virtual machine. But there's an advantage from this, because you don't have the OS in Docker, because Docker itself uh, had effectively runs the OS. <coughs> then all your images are smaller. They just have your application code, which tends to be less not as uh, voluminous as the um, um, application plus operating system. Um, so we will be using Docker, and um, it's built on top of conventional Linux capabilities, and it's much easier to use, and it's much lower performance, because everything's running in hardware. Where I say that when you do OpenStack, you're doing all sorts of software networking and things like that, which makes it very slow. We won some, when we were last running OpenStack for, for a large amount of time, we spent day uh, over a day just recovering from a crash, because uh, the, due to the network uh, overheads of, uh, of the way uh, OpenStack did things. There are some security issues which are worth studying, but uh, now gradually going away. And there's Kubernetes, which manages lots of Docker instances. And it supports, therefore, sort of parallel computing or large jobs or hyperscale computing. Now, as well as that, we should contrast this with OpenStack, which is not really, it's not a hypervisor. It runs on a hypervisor and then manages the cloud. And they so and do give you software emulations of things that you'd want to have inside your virtual machines. And OpenStack typically runs on KVM, but you can run it on the other hypervisors as well. And OpenStack is a huge project. It's got lots and lots of sub-projects. Six compute, pro it's almost like Amazon and its services. And there are uh, three data projects, five storage projects, seven network projects, four security projects, and so on. Lots of projects. All of these are open source. They all go to the OpenStack meetings. OpenStack has a new release every six months. You need a large system staff to run OpenStack. That's one reason we gave it up. Uh, you need too much support needed. Here are sort of the, of all those many, many capabilities. These are the ones you typically use. Nova, which is equivalent to EC2 on Amazon. Neutron, the networking. Swift, the object store. That's equivalent to S3. Glance, the image service. Security, Keystone and send the storage on the actual disk on the computer. And here is a comparison of the um, different virtualization technologies. 
and start with the infrastructure. Remember, that's what Amazon originally sold us. Then we have a host operating system. This is for um, type two. Then we have the hypervisor. And then this is for a KVM type scenario. Um, here we have um, Docker running. This is the Docker scenario. We have Docker running on our system. And then we have these uh, applications in their own containers. And then the, if we have KVM, then we have uh, the three different applications have the OS, the guest OS. Oh, I, I miss guest OS. Wow. And um, but otherwise they have the same application as back in the Docker case. So we replicate the OS, and we have this overhead of guest OS, type of OS, and a host OS. Whereas Docker host OS, and just a little uh, little if statement in the Linux kernel to decide which which um, of the different containers it's running. All right, so that is a very very crude uh, description of what's going on. But um, we'll come back to it in more detail later on. Thank you very much.